Today we remember Jesus and the story of his birth. Jesus is our King. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Jesus is our way. Even with, sorry, with Jesus, even dark places are light. Jesus is the truth. In Jesus we shall live forever. Jesus is our life. wonderful to be reminded why we've come to remember the story of Jesus and as the service continues we're going to be looking at that story the story of the first Christmas in lots of different ways and hopefully to remind ourselves if we're familiar with it and maybe for some people it might be a new story for the first time if you have your activity pack with you, I invite you to have a look inside. There's lots of interesting things. Yes, sheep, there are some really interesting things in. Sharon has put them together. So there is like a booklet that tells you what you need to do and lots of different activities depending on how old you are. You might find some of them really easy. You might find some of them a little bit more difficult. There's the storybook, and we're going to look at this later, but it's something for you to take home and read again over time. There's a star, and you might want to have a go at doing this fairly quickly. There's lots of stickers of stars inside, so you might like to decorate your star, and maybe you might like to write a prayer on it, and during our songs, one of the virgins will come round, and we're going to put our little stars on the big star that's over at the side. I invite you, if you're at home, to do something as well. What would your prayer be to Jesus on this Christmas Eve as we prepare for Christmas Day? In the little white packet, there's something really exciting. Oh, it jingles. We're going to make some jingle jangles ready for the final song so we can play some instruments. Oh, my favourite bit, there's some nativity stickers that go inside the booklet that we can put together. It's a little present. Who knows what's inside? Oh, it may contain milk. Does it mean it might contain chocolate? Mm. And then there is some colouring pencils for you to get on and do. So do, if you want to have a go at any of those crafts, whether at home or here, do have a look at them. But first, Sharon, you've come dressed up. Does anyone know what Sharon's come dressed up as? 
Yeah? The shepherd. How did you know she'd come dressed up as a shepherd? Yeah? Because she has a sheep. The sheep is looking very happy to be here in church today. James, you've come dressed up as well. Yes. Hmm. What do we think of James' Christmas jumper? It's good? It's interesting. 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 That is an honest response. That is a very honest response. <laughs> it's interesting. It's not quite as good as the sprout Christmas shirt that's on underneath, but James said it was too cold just to just, have it. It's a short sleeve shirt. But you're going to be telling us a story later. I am. Yes. This, so is, this is my narrating Christmas jumper. The narrating Christmas jumper. And I came dressed up as the whole host of angels because I couldn't decide which one to be. So I've come as all of them. Good idea. Why choose? That sang to the shepherds. Part of the story that we're going to hear about later on. Has anyone else come dressed up? I can see some people. Nice. We've got some more shepherds and some more sheep down there with Alex, Charlotte and uh, Sophia. I think I can see a king somewhere. Is there a king over there? Fantastic. Oh, I like your cloak. The cloak's just been put round. And you've got a really fantastic crown on your head. <gasps> I think an angel's just popped into the building. Wow. Is there another? Another angel's just popped into the building over there. And we've but got a few tiny Santas. There are a few tiny Santas around. Yes. Any others that we've missed? I wonder if anyone's dressed up at home. Sadly, we've not enabled the live chat because it's a children's service, so we can't hear what you're dressed up as at home. But we'd love to see photographs of you dressed up. So do share them later on our Facebook page. We'd love to see what you're up to. We're going to have our first song now. And there's lots of hopefully, if we got the screen working. Yes. I've got a thumbs up from the back. You'll be able to see. It's got lots of lovely pictures for us to look at. If you finish doing your star craft, when the vergers come round, you can take it and put it on the big star. Don't worry if you've not had enough time to do it. There's a song at the end, and we'll do it then. So we're going to hear a song all about the Christmas story. Each year in December You can hear the world sing In the school, in the shops You can hear sleigh bells ring Now listen quite closely Or do sing along As I tell you the story Of the first Christmas song it started with Mary, an ordinary girl When she heard some good news that would change all the world An angel said, Mary, you're having a son He is coming to rescue, he's God's chosen one So Mary was pregnant with God's baby boy The news was amazing So she sang out with joy Glory to God He has done a great thing He is saving His people So everyone sing The song kept on growing and Mary did too Until Jesus was born As a baby brand new So God's King arrived On that first Christmas day And in Bethlehem's manger He lay in the hay The sky filled with angels A heavenly throng And they joined the king he is born as a baby so everyone sing then Mary a 
and Joseph and Jesus so small went up to the temple to thank God for it all. Simeon lived there, a very old man. He trusted in God and in his rescue plan. Now at last he could join in the first Christmas song. Glory to God, I have seen a great thing. God has kept every promise, so everyone sing. So may. This Christmas you will hear the world sing And over the fields you might hear church bells ring And now that you've heard it you could sing along You could be in the choir for the first Christmas song really beautiful song about the first Christmas. We're going to now listen to a reading from Luke's Gospel that tells the story of that first Christmas that Charlotte's going to read for us. The birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was a governor of Syria and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified but the angel said to them do not be afraid I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people today in the town of David a saviour has been born to you he is Christ the Lord Thank you. We're now going to tell the nativity story, but to do this, I'm going to need some help. I'm going to need some help from Paul. Here he comes, because he's going to help us with the big nativity display at the back. Normally, we'd get you all to come up to the front, but sadly, we're not allowed to do this. So Paul's going to do it on your behalf. I'm going to need Sharon, because Sharon's really, really good at actions, and I'm not. So when it comes to the action bits, watch Sharon. <laughs> Don't watch me, because I'll be watching Sharon. And we need James, because he's going to tell us the story. But first, we've got some people dressed up to help. We haven't got any Marys and Josephs in the building. We have, I don't think we've got any animals in the building, but we've got our shepherds and our sheep, and we've got our wise men, our kings, and we've got some angels, and we've got some others. So, yeah, the sheep are at the back, Paul. So, our story today begins with a woman called Mary. Now, in as we're going to do this, James is going to read the poem, the verses, 
But there's different choruses that are going to involve you and me looking at Sharon to make sure that we get our actions right. The words are going to be up on the screen, but they're quite tiny. You'll probably see them better if you're at home. So, here goes, James. You'll have to read, okay. and we'll see how we do with the actions. Are we ready with the first set of actions, then? Everyone. Everybody watch Susie. So, God knocks down the proud and lifts up the meek and does mighty things for those who are weak and blesses the ones whose service he seeks. So sing out his praise. He's amazing. Should we try that one more time? I wasn't very impressed. No, no I, thought your, I thought your actions me. needed a lot of work, really. Yeah. Come on. Let's try it one more time, everyone. God knocks down the proud and lifts up the meek and does mighty things for those who are weak and blesses the ones whose service he seeks. So sing out his praise. He's amazing. That was much better, everyone. So, a woman called Mary was doing her chores when an angel arrived, but not through the doors. He simply appeared, and she dropped to the floor. Hello, Mary, he said. God is with you. God is with me, she wondered. But what does that mean? What is this all about? Is it some kind of dream? The angel just smiled. Don't be scared. Please don't scream. God is happy with you and will bless you. Ready, everyone? God knocks down the proud and lifts up the meek and does mighty things for those who are weak and blesses the ones whose service he seeks. So sing out his praise. He's amazing. You'll soon have a baby, the angel went on, a quite special baby called Jesus, God's son, the heir of King David. He'll sit on his throne, and his kingdom will last forever. But how, Mary asked, I don't understand. I'm engaged to be wed, but he's not yet my man. Trust God, said the angel. He's got it all planned. His spirit will come upon you. Ready, everyone? God knocks down the proud and lifts up the meek and does mighty things for those who are weak and blesses the ones whose service he seeks. So sing out his praise. He's amazing. She was quite a girl, wasn't she, Mary? I think she was. I'm not sure what I would do if an angel came and told me all those things. I'm not sure I'd be quite as, uh, as obedient to God's message. But I wonder what you think of Mary. I wonder what you make of her. Should we just have a quick pause and pray and ask God to help us to be like her? Lord, thank you for Mary. Help us to be like her someone who listened and answered when you asked. Help us to learn and to give and to serve, no matter what the task. Amen. Amen. Now, Joseph comes next. Here he is, Joseph, in our story. He's engaged to marry Mary, but she's, he has just found out that she's about to have a baby and the baby is not his. Hmm. There's a chorus for this part of the poem as well. So once again, we need to join in. Go on away, James. Ready, everyone? Joseph, don't worry. Joseph, don't weep. Lay down your head and go back to sleep. Mary's been faithful, her love strong and deep, and her baby is God's own son. I think we did all right with that one. Well done, everyone. So, all night Joseph tossed, all night Joseph turned. He just couldn't sleep. He'd only just learned that Mary was pregnant. What's more, she'd confirmed that the baby she bore was not his. Here we go. Joseph, don't worry. Joseph, don't weep. Lay down your head and go back to sleep. Mary's been faithful, her love strong and deep, and her baby is God's own son. She told him this tale, an angelic visit, 
a son to be born by God's Holy Spirit? The more she went on, the less he believed it. He wanted to break their engagement. But just as sleep came, that angel appeared. Don't worry, he said, there's nothing to fear. I know that you're troubled, so you need to hear that Mary is telling the truth. The baby she bears is God's holy son. Call his name Jesus, for he is the one God promised to send to save everyone. Emmanuel, God is with us. He's the answer to all that the prophets have said. So keep your engagement, be glad and be wed. And when Joseph woke up, that's just what he did. He took Mary to be his wife. Here we go again. Joseph, don't worry. Joseph, don't weep. Lay down your head and go back to sleep. Mary's been faithful, her love strong and deep, and her baby is God's own son. Another really interesting and quite incredible person in the story, Joseph. Again, would we do what Joseph did? Just going to pause again and think about all that Joseph did. And we're going to pray and ask God to help us be like him. Lord Jesus, we thank you for Joseph. Help us to be like him, a man both kind and just, Help us to listen when you speak. Teach us to trust. Amen. Amen. And then Mary and her husband Joseph went to be counted by the Caesar in Bethlehem. There were no empty rooms for the couple to stay, so they stepped into a place where the animals lay. And there in the hay, she gave birth to God's son and cuddled and cradled him, cradled him, her special one. So, shepherds and angels, it's your big moment. Sadly, you'll have to do it from your seat. But here we are, me, some more shepherds and the sheep at the front. Okay, so we've, we've got another chorus. We've got another chorus, haven't we? Mm. Okay. Now, everybody watch Sharon very carefully for these ones. Sing praise to God and give him glory, celebrate his wondrous story of love and joy and peace to men, for it begins in Bethlehem. Shepherds lying on a hill, the night was silent, all was still. They watched their flock of grazing sheep and tried hard not to fall asleep. When bright and white an angel came to light the night a fiery flame. The shepherds trembled where they lay. The angel said, don't be afraid. Here we go. Sing praise to God and give him glory. Celebrate his wondrous story of love and joy and peace to men. For it begins in Bethlehem. The news is good, the news I bring. Good news to make you leap and sing. Good news for people everywhere. Good news of joy for all to share. Good news for God has kept his word and sent his saviour, Christ the Lord. The one he promised he would send is born this day in Bethlehem. And this will be a sign for you. This is how you'll know it's true. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloth, sleeping in a cattle trough. The angel then was joined by more, six and twelve and twenty-four, and then too many more to number, a heavenly choir, loud as thunder. And so the angels left that place, just like they'd come without a trace, except for all they sang and said, which echoed in the shepherds' heads. Let's go to Bethlehem and see, the shepherds all as one agreed. They found the baby where he lay, asleep upon a bed of hay. They told them then what angels said. Then Mary smiled and raised her head. A secret hid there in her eyes, for she was not one bit surprised. So back they went to sheep and hill, no longer silent, hardly still but singing loud like angels bright of all that they had seen that night. 
Sing praise to God and give Him glory. Celebrate His wondrous story of love and joy and peace to men, for it begins in Bethlehem. Don't know about you, but I'd love to have seen all those angels in the, star, in the sky on a dark night be like the best ever firework display. It's been absolutely incredible. But the angels keep popping up and they tell of good news, of great joy, but not just for one or two or three, but for absolutely everyone. We're going to think now a little bit about them and pray that God would make us be like them. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the angels, the angels that sang about peace on earth, the angels that shouted aloud about the Saviour's birth. Show us how to live in ways that sing praises and sing of peace on earth. Amen. Amen. Now in the story, the time passes quite a bit of time, months, maybe even years. And then some star watchers, or as they're more commonly known, wise men, appear. They've been following a star, but it takes them a long time to get to Bethlehem. So they don't arrive at the same time as the shepherds. No, probably a year or maybe even two that they get there later. And when they get there, they knock on King Herod's door. But he says, there's no baby king here. Who, we've got at least one wise man in the building, a little one, looking very fantastic in his crown. And there's a big star over there that are being followed. Now, we come to my favourite actions. We do. And if you're not standing, you may want to stand wherever you are now, ready for these actions. Come on, everyone. You need, to stand, you need to stand for these ones. Okay. Ready? One hump. Two humps. Lumpity lump. The star watchers went with a bump and a thump. One hump. Two humps. Lumpity lump. The star watchers followed the star. Now, I, I, don't, I don't think there was enough bumping up and down there of the right. I, I think we need to practice that one again. One hump. Two humps. Lumpity lump, the star watchers went with a bump and a thump. One hump, two humps, lumpity lump, the star watchers followed the star. So the star watchers watched the stars go by, looking for secrets in the sky. And then they saw a special star, away in the west, away off far. A king's been born, that's what it means, Judea way or so it seems. They climbed aboard their camely beasts and set off west from their homes back east. Ready, everyone? One hump, two humps, lumpity lump. The star watchers went with a bump and a thump. One hump, two humps, lumpity lump. The star watchers followed the star. At last, their journey came to an end. They parked their camels in Jerusalem. Then they went to Herod, king of the nation, to ask him for some information. O oh, king, they asked, they were quite polite. Somewhere round here on this starry night, a brand new baby king abides. Can you tell us where this child resides? A worried look crossed Herod's face. He had no plans to be replaced. So he asked his priests if they could tell where this brand new baby king might dwell. The priests all answered straight away. Bethlehem is what the prophets say. Then Herod thought an evil thing. I think I need to meet this king. Star Watchers, friends, King Herod smiled. In Bethlehem you'll find the child. Would you tell me where you find him, please? The exact address would put my mind at ease. Herod, of course, told them a lie. He'd already planned for the child to die. When he found the boy, that's what he'd do. So the Star Watchers left without a clue. The shining star led them to the place, a simple house, not some fancy pet space. When they saw the little boy, they gave him a pile of special toys, presents rather fit for a king, a bunch of shiny golden things, a spice called myrrh, a sort of perfume, while smelly frankincense filled the room. Then in the night they had a dream that showed them Herod's evil scheme. 
So they never said where the boy's house lay, but went straight home by another way. Ready? One hump, two humps, lumpity lump, the star watchers went with a bump and a thump. One hump, two humps, lumpity lump, the star watchers followed the star. Do please have a seat. There was good commitment, particularly uh, from the back, yeah. from the Verger team and the sound desk. We'd expect nothing less. I, I'm very yeah. impressed, very impressed. And thank you to all who've been taking part in the building. The Star Watchers, those wise men, journeying for two years. Can you imagine going on a two year journey to get somewhere that you didn't know where you were going? It's a lot of commitment. Shall we pause and reflect and pray? on their part in the story. Lord Jesus, thank you for these star watchers. Help us to be like them, following your lead, looking to you for guidance in every word and deed. Amen. We come to the end of the story, and this is why we celebrate Christmas. But we do it every year, don't we? Every year. And that's because there's a special reason behind it. And that's why there's one last bit to James's poem. So what is the point of angels and shepherds and camels and stars, you say? Is it just a nice story to tell to the children to celebrate Christmas Day? It's not just a story, it's not just for kids, it's the hinge on which history swings. That Bethlehem baby grew into a man who challenged all powers and kings. He taught us that love is better than hate, that serving beats being in charge. He showed us the value of each human life, the little as well as the large. And then on a cross he died for us, died to take all our wrongs away, and walked three days later right out of his tomb, to turn death's dark night to day. And that is the good news the angels proclaimed, the heart of all Jesus would do. A new life for now, a new life forever. That's his Christmas present to you. Look at your hands. Who are they for? Have they had a year like this one before? Have they washed and scrubbed and sanitized? Got dry and sore and moisturized? 
Have they done less work, been at home more? Or have they worked harder than ever before? Have they helped a neighbour, a parent or friend? Have they longed for all these restrictions to end? Have they missed friends, felt too far apart? Have they lost a loved one and clutched at your heart? This Christmas is different. It can't be the same. The world all around us has obviously changed. But the meaning of Christmas, the heart of it all, began in a baby, so precious and small, with no glitz or glamour, no parties or feasts. He came for the broken, the lonely, the least. The hands of his earth dad were dusty and worn, hardened by woodwork, but chosen for more. The hands of his mother were softer, but weary, holding her baby, eyes happy, but teary. The hands of the shepherds who visited first were rough and strong and ingrained with dirt. The hands of the angels were lifted in praise to the one we call Saviour, the Ancient of Days. To the babe whose smooth hands, so weak and so small, would one day carry the wrongs of us all. So that every person on earth may know how much they are loved by how far he would go. To rescue redeem, forgive and restore, to give us the life that we were born for, a life full of meaning, of joy, peace and love, walking hand in hand with our Father above. So whether your heart is heavy or light, with hands held open or, or screwed up tight, whether they're full or empty or tired, work-worn or restless or uninspired. Just know that you don't have to do it alone to carry your burdens and trials on your own. Jesus came to walk by your side, to fill you with hope, to be your guide. Look at your hands. Who are they for? If they take hold of Jesus, they'll need nothing more. truly wonderful to be reminded at Christmas. This is why we celebrate that Jesus came and he's with us now. Despite everything that's going on in the world, he is with us. Whether at home, whether we're here, whether with lots of people in the building, whether we're at home on our own, Jesus is with us. I just want to say a huge thank you to Rebecca Anderson who sang away in a manger for us. It was really beautiful and really poignant to be reminded of that song and its words and how Jesus comes to be with us. We're coming to the end of our service and we've got one more song to listen um, to. So if you've got a, something to shake you've made during the service, you've got anything with you that might rattle, you've got some hands that you can clap, we're going to be joyful before the Lord. And if you're at home, do sing along and make up for us not being able to sing here in church. So 
salvation story through our world of grief and pain God stepped down on Christmas Day comfort and joy comfort and joy hope is dawned with the newborn boy comfort and joy And join with the angel song Rejoice Unto us a son is born The light of life has dawned The hope of nations Gladly bears their all Our great salvation Every sin born at the cross Risen now He walks with us Comfort and joy, comfort and joy Hope is dawned with the new to be with you this afternoon whether it's here in church or whether it's at home if you're watching on catch up later on it's lovely to be with you as well we do wish you all from St Ormond's a very happy Christmas we are having a service at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning I do believe there are still spaces if you want to come and join us in the building or join us from home it's wonderful to gather to worship together on the most special day when we remember that Jesus was born so we now ask for God to bless each and every one of us. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Mary and Joseph, and the peace of Jesus the Christ child be with you and those whom you love this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among each and every one of us, now and always. Amen. <laughs>